Hi, I'm Anand Janavisal, a graduate student at Virginia Tech. To I'll summarize our work, I know what you meant, learning human objectives by underestimating their choice set. Let's say you have a robotic arm that you want to teach how to bring you a cup of coffee, something like the video shown here on the left. However, imagine that due to some disabilities or maybe a lack of experience, you show a demonstration like the one here on the right. Obviously, despite trying their best, this person keeps spilling coffee while teaching the robot to bring them a cup. The question we're trying to answer is, how can robots learn from such imperfect demonstrations? Through this work, what we found was that robots that want to be inclusive must evaluate the human's inputs in the context of alternatives they can actually provide. To understand what I mean, let's take a look at how this problem is generally formulated. In the inverse reinforcement learning paradigm, the human provides some demonstrations, xi, from their choice set xi edge. Here, xi edge is the set of all possible demonstrations the human can show. However, the robot does not know what the human's choice set xi edge is, but instead it estimates this. Let's call this estimate xi r. With those basics, we can say that the robot wants to learn the human's goal or objective, which is a function of the demonstrations they show. One way to do this is through Bayesian inference, where the robot wants to form a belief over all possible rewards by reasoning over the probability of a particular reward given a particular demonstration and the robot's estimate of all possible demonstrations, xi r. Unfortunately, robots cannot read human minds yet. So they have no way of knowing what a reward is. To make this easier, we turn to Bayes' theorem that changes the question from estimating a reward given a demonstration to estimating the probability of showing a particular demonstration given a reward. Multiplied by the prior, of course. Now this first term on the right is asking the question, how will a human act when they have a particular goal in mind? One way to model this is through the Boltzmann rational model that says humans are approximately optimal given a reward. Here, how rational the human is can be modified through the hyperparameter beta. If you notice a denominator here, what we see is that the robot compares what the human showed it to all the alternatives it thinks the human can provide. So as long as the robot has a good estimate of the human's choice set, he can figure out the reward function. However, returning to the demonstration I showed you earlier, here due to some constraints, the human is actually unable to show a good demonstration for what they want. This leads to a problem. The robot will inevitably get the human's choice set wrong. And remember that having a good estimate of the human's choice set is key to the learning scenario. Given this problem, how should the robots err? One option is to overestimate the human's capabilities. Returning to the coffee cup example, this would mean that the robot estimates that a human, no matter their limitations, can show a good demonstration for what they want, which is a cup of coffee being delivered without spilling any. Or the robot can underestimate the human's capabilities. This would mean that the robot would be more considerate of the limitations of the humans trying to teach the robot. Overall, what we want the robot to do is extract what the human wants from their demonstrations. So let's see how either overestimating or underestimating affects the robot's confidence. And then we can also examine the worst case scenario in each case. So what is confidence in our problem setting? Since we're trying to compare what happens when the robot overestimates or underestimates the human's capabilities, we decided to define confidence as a comparison of the Shannon entropy or the belief to the gold standard robot. This gold standard robot is a mind reader and knows exactly what the human's choice set is. Our first theoretical insight is that robots that can overestimate the human's capabilities are overly confident in their learning. Returning to the coffee example, what this means is that if the robot overestimates our capabilities and we show a non-ideal demonstration where we spill coffee, the robot becomes confident that we are optimizing for spilling. This is because the robot overestimated our capabilities and thinks we could have chosen a demonstration where we did not spill coffee if that's what we wanted the robot to learn. 
On the other hand, robots that underestimate the human's capabilities will not be so quick to optimize for spilling. Here, the robot realizes that the trajectory we have shown is our best choice for not spilling coffee. Hence, the risk averse robot will think that both spilling coffee and not spilling coffee are still likely. So in terms of confidence, what we see is that underestimating the human's choice set is better if you want robots to learn from imperfect demonstrations. Let's take a look at what happens in the best and worst case scenarios for either case. What we found was that in the best case scenario, both overestimating and underestimating lead to a robot learning not to spill in coffee. However, in the worst case scenario, the robot that overestimates the human's capabilities will learn to spill coffee. While the robot that underestimates will simply stick to the prior. This would mean that the robot will not learn anything new from the demonstrations and will be confused about whether you want to spill coffee or not. All what this means is that the robots that overestimates the human capabilities are risk seeking. This means that they can quickly become overconfident in the reward they learned, even if it is wrong. Due to this risky nature, these robots, when they learn to spill coffee, will commit to it. Robots that underestimate the human's capabilities do the opposite. These robots are conservative and will try to maintain several possible explanations for the demonstrations they see. From our theoretical analysis, what we observed was that robots need to underestimate the human's capabilities to be inclusive learners. This way they can try to extract information from non-ideal demonstrations that a novice user or a person with disabilities may show the robot. So when a user shows the robot a non-ideal demonstration like the one here in green, instead of comparing it to the ideal demonstration like the one in gray, it should compare it to an alternative similar to the one here in orange. Our key insight is that for a robot to be an inclusive learner, it needs to underestimate the human's choice set. And we found that a robot that compares the human's demonstrations to similar and simpler alternatives can underestimate the human's choice set. So how can we generate these similar and simpler alternatives? There are many different ways, but here I'll summarize three. The first is to create noisy deformations to the human demonstration. The second is to create sparse inputs where we solve for a similar trajectory with fewer inputs. The third way is to provide consistent inputs for longer times, creating trajectories that are similar. With this theory in mind, we tested our method in the simulated lunar lander environment. Here the objective is to land a spacecraft between the yellow flags without crashing it. At first, we provided some demonstrations where the simulated user is trying their best to land the craft in the middle, but is unable to do so. When the robot overestimates our capabilities, it assumes that we could have shown demonstrations where we landed the craft in the middle safely and learns to mimic exactly what we did and crashes the spacecraft. On the other hand, when the robot underestimates the human's capabilities, it is actually able to understand that what we want it to do is land the spacecraft in the middle without crashing and learns to do so. With our method working well in simulations, we decided to test it out in the physical world with actual users. In each task, users were faced with different constraints that prevented them from showing exactly what they wanted. Let's start with the task from our motivating example. The user wants the robot to deliver a cup without spilling its contents. The optimal behavior that the human wants the robot to learn is shown here. On the left, we show an example user demonstration where we can see that the human keeps spilling coffee in the demonstrations. In the middle, you can see what the robot learned and on the right, we plot regret, which captures how much worse the learned behavior is compared to the desired behavior. Here, the robot learns with Bayesian inverse reinforcement learning, a baseline that ignores humans' limitations. This robot learns to match the human's demonstrations and spills coffee. Next, we learn from the human's demonstrations by comparing them only to similar alternatives produced by noisy perturbations. This robot was uncertain about what the human wanted. Finally, comparing the user demonstrations to both similar and simpler alternatives helps the robot extrapolate the human's objective. This robot minimizes the average regret across all users. 
Next, we have the constraint task. Here, the user is attempting to drop some waste in the bin by reaching around an obstacle. Because users were constrained to only control the robot's position, they struggled to manipulate the arm around the ways in their demonstrations. The BIRL robot learned to mimic these demonstrations and move directly to the waste bin, breaking the ways. As before, the noisy baseline is overly cautious. This robot is not sure what the human's demonstrations are optimizing for and thinks either moving through the ways or around the ways are equally likely. Finally, the robot only learns the right thing when it reasons about similar and simpler alternatives. Overall, as robots become ubiquitous in the world, they will encounter users that are not experts. So we need robots to be inclusive learners to ensure that they can learn from these non-expert users and their demonstrations. We found that this can be achieved by having robots that interpret the user's inputs in the context of alternatives that the user can actually provide, instead of assuming that every user is a perfect user. Thank you.